We all want everything to be fair or as fair as possible. Welcome back to Andrew Says, I wouldn't lie to you except for maybe this once. And what the media and other people online are asking for regarding the women's soccer team, or I suppose women's soccer in general, is unfair. And let me tell you why. They're going for equality of outcome, not equality of opportunity. Now here's why it's unfair. Referring to the winning women's team, in 2019 they made $110,000 versus the men in 2018, the last Men's World Cup, $420,000. Now, just like the gender pay gap, the wage gap, sorry, to the untrained eye, it can obviously seem unfair. Men are getting paid more than women, and we want to balance this out somehow. But it takes just a little digging, just a little digging to discover it's actually the opposite. So let's, let's uh, discuss the pay gap first, actually, here, before we get into why it's actually the opposite. So when we compare the Women's World Cup in 2050, in the last one, to the 2010 Men's World Cup, the Women's World Cup brought in $73 million. The men, $4 billion. So obviously that's a stark contrast. You can start, start to see where this is going. 2019 women's versus 2018 men's. So these are the last two World Cups. The women brought in $131 million versus the men's $6 billion. So right away you should be like, okay, this makes sense then. This is starting to make more sense. The men bring in a lot more revenue than the women. And in fact, people who are complaining should probably be celebrating the fact that the women have almost doubled the revenue over this period of time, which is actually quite remarkable. And any investors in this should have, have nothing but joy in their hearts for how much the revenue has increased. But of course, that's not all. According to Forbes titled Revenue Disparity Explains Pay Disparity Between Soccer World Cups, Men and Women. When comparing the revenue and payouts for women's 2015 and men's 2010, which is what I mentioned, women's 73 million, men's 4 billion, women actually got 13% of the revenue share to the men's 9. That's 4% higher than men. Now this was 10 years ago, albeit, but we'll get to the updated numbers here. So this is an example of 10 years ago, the men were getting 4% less than what the women get. Nobody wants to mention this. Now remember how easy I said it was to calculate. Now you see the articles like the CNBC one that's behind me, where they mention the prize money is, prize money is just 75% of what the men's is, people are fighting for pay equity, and it'll be another 20 years before the women's pay is equal, even if it's doubled every time, by 100%. No mention at all about the pay in relation to the revenue produced by the tournament, nor the fact that the women get the higher revenue share. This is all stuff that should be all given at the same time if you're going to make these comparisons. You're looking at the numbers, I don't know how you don't. I would have to assume it's been left out on purpose. Moving to the most up-to-date numbers now, we've got the 2019, we've got the 2018. Like I said, the National Review, as I mentioned, Women's World Cup, 131 million versus the men's six billion. The women's prize pool up whopping 23% of revenue. The men's just 7%. Women are being proportionally paid more than triple what the men are making. Nowhere in these articles are they mentioning this stuff. And according to the same whiny CNBC article, had the US men won the World Cup, they would have made $1.1 million each instead of $420,000. Now 1.1 million is still less than triple when, than what they got, which is 420,000. So even if they won and got all these extra monetary rewards that this article is claiming, proportionally, it's still less than what the women made and the, who make more than triple than the men. So they're still, even if they got everything that this article complained about, the women are still making more. Then there's the argument of the talent level. Okay? It's just not the same. Th this is why, this is, should be the obvious reason as to why it doesn't make much money. As much money. People who want the pay increases to come out of some sort of charity, it's insulting to the women. If you know women in sports, you know that they don't want to be treated differently. They don't, that's the whole point of this thing, I thought, is to not treat women differently. So it's insulting to the women who deserve what they're getting, which is still a lot of money, and it's more than the men. And there are places where we can point to where we can 
show that it's a money thing and it's not a sexism thing. Think of Amanda Nunes, who just n had another knockout victim in the UFC. Best female fighter of all time. Can go back to Ronda Rousey if you want when she was headlining cards. Women's wrestling. Lots of money there. Professional wrestling. Headlining pay-per-views there. Are we now to pretend that the WNBA makes as much money as the NBA? Are we now to pretend that the lingerie football, now the Legends Football League, mind you, makes as much money as the NFL and therefore the players should be paid the same? Something you may not have seen, maybe you have, we'll pull up right now, the Women's World Cup team lost to 14-year-olds, okay? Now, if generation of revenue doesn't matter and we just want everything to equal, why aren't we paying these 14-year-olds um, $110,000 each? They beat the women, they're just as good, if not better, so why aren't we paying them the same thing? Oh, that's right, it's because of revenue generation. Nobody's coming out to watch the 14-year-olds play, except for mom and dad. So I want to point you to something Eric Weinstein said on the Joe Rogan Experience, talking about fairness in competition. Let's take a look. Why are piano competitions historically uh, disproportionately, you know, uh, let's say, entered and won by Russians or chess or who knows what? Mm -hmm. Well, Russians are beasts in the way that they destroy children on their way to the concert stage. They will do things that most American families will not do to produce a concert pianist. Okay, that's not an unfairness for the rest of us. I mean, I play the piano. I can't get on stage with these guys because they're just amazing. It's not, it's not an unfairness that right. I'm not represented on that stage. Um, you know, if, if I told you that uh, my intention is to become the world's greatest uh, jujitsu expert at age 53, being overweight, not having uh, any history in combat sports, you know and I know that it's not going to happen. So as he says, it is not unfair in competition if someone is better than you at something. It's not unfair if somebody who's better than you at something is more attractive to audiences, is better compensated than you for their talent level. We can't go around policing the world, especially monetarily, to compensate for people's hurt feelings. Financially, it, it would cause everything to collapse. That's why communism doesn't work, because we're making up for people's lack of skill with trying to be overly fair. Now, I've played enough sports in my life to know a lot of female athletes, and when they're playing on guys' teams or they're playing with men, they don't want to be treated differently. And like I said, this is supposed to be about equality. So when you make it a charity case for these girls, it's insulting. When somebody steps on the field with Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi, and let's say it's a girl who's also professional, she's not, she's not about to say that she's as good as Messi, because 99% of the players are not. So when you're just like, you know what, Messi, you get $100 million, and girl next to him, eh, you're not as good as him, but here's $100 million anyways. I mean, I'm sure they would accept the money, as we all would, but you can see what I mean and how it's, you're, you're patronizing these people, you're insulting them. And I guarantee the majority of the women playing this know the reason why the men are making more money. They're soccer fans, they're not stupid. But of course, it's the few loud voices that are making these claims that are once again ruining it for everybody. Because now these articles have to come out. If that stuff doesn't happen, we don't get the um, USA lost FC Dallas, the Women's Soccer World Cup, the revenue disparity is a joke. We don't get that if we don't have these few loud voices complaining about something that's nonsensical. So not only does it not make any sense, not only are the women getting paid more, but you're treating the women, who is likely the majority, like a charity case, and it's insulting to them.